thank you, Honorable Chair. Intertrack Zimbabwe is a local company that I formed in 2012, and shareholders are Mr. Whitnell Chimayo, myself, who I own 50%, and my partner, Mr. Yusuf Ahmed, who is also on the company called Intermediary Investments, so he's also a 50% shareholder. Right, thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, just as a point of correction, the tender was awarded to me by the State Procurement Board and not particularly by ZPC. In 2012 towards 2018, uh, ZPC advertised a tender in all newspapers. They advertised the tender for a 100 megawatt solar farm in the code of Gwanda Palm Tree solar farm. As they advertised the tenders in the newspapers, I, as I bought the newspapers, I went to ZPC to buy a document. The document was $10. After buying the tender document, I had a lot of interest in the project because I had various technical partners world over who I thought I could partner with and participate in the project. So after buying the document, we attended <coughs> a pre-bid conference. This pre-bid conference was well attended by maybe over 70 companies, where they outlined to us how they intend to implement the project and where they want the project to be and certain guidelines that we required. I traveled to, after this pre-bid conference, I traveled to Germany, where I met various companies that are involved in solar energy. One was Greenfield Solar Energy, and the other one was Freytag, and I had discussions with them. Upon having discussions with them, we agreed on certain, a certain criteria we would use to participate and prepare a bid for the tender. After all those agreements, I came back to Zimbabwe and subsequently went to China as well. I went to China, I met a company called Chint Electric. Uh, the company has assets over, worth over 30 billion, annual turnover of average of 12 billion dollars. I also presented my case to them that there is a tender in Zimbabwe for a 100 megawatt solar farm and considering that uh, your profile says it all. You have installed over 3,000 megawatts in solar worldwide. <coughs> I'm interested in working with you. They were also very interested and said, well, I managed to present myself well. And they thought I was an ideal partner for them in Zimbabwe. And they said, they agreed. We also signed contracts. So I had two technical partners, Greenfield Solar, and change, so I had a choice, I was for a choice of two. I came back to Zimbabwe and we started preparing the bid. Sometime in 2018, I, prepared, uh, I decided to, 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 to submit the bid with the German company, Greenfield Solar. We submitted the bid. After submitting the bid, uh, we were beaten by, after submitting the bid, the tenant closed, agitation went on, came the award time, <coughs> we were beaten by a company called China Jiangxi for international cooperation. Their price was around 184 million. So, after the, the award, I then went to the Estuar minister, who was Minister Mavaire, and I explained to him that in the beginning, the whole solar project was my brainchild. I brought Germans to do a quick feasibility. Minister Mangoma had referred me to Rwanda, where he thought it was most probably the best place we could get the best sunshine. And I thought it was unfair that I would then lose out to another company. Then he said, okay, we understand. This was your brainchild. You're the one who brought this project to us. So, in the interest of you know, local companies, I will be present before cabinet 
that uh, <coughs> three companies be awarded since we have a, 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 a deficit of over 1,500 megawatts. Mr. Baba, I read the cabinet and cabinet agreed to say no. The more the better. For as long as these other bidders who are compliant are willing to meet the same price that China Jiangxi was awarded at. Then submissions were made to State Procurement Board and the erstwhile late chairman Charles Poza then responded positively and said, <coughs> yes indeed, this is a national security issue. We have to award two other companies. Then we were awarded into Czech Zimbabwe and ZTE. So at that stage, there were three companies that were awarded for the 100 megawatts. That was early 2018, if I'm not mistaken. As we proceeded, we had contract negotiations. China Jiangxi also came up with different proposals to try and increase their price. They were not happy why two other bidders were awarded when it was them who was the cheapest. Then some controversy was created and China Jiangxi also tried to increase their price. And since our price was higher than them, we had reduced our price. Then that violated tender procedures, the lowest bidder specification principle. And ultimately, the State Procurement Board figured out that this was going to be a mess and they cancelled everything. So they cancelled all three bids and said the tenders have been cancelled. Uh, but out of the six bidders, we will give you a chance to resubmit your tenders. Then it was advertised again. Basing on the prices that I got from the Germans, I decided to switch back to the Chinese partners who I visited. So it was time to submit new bids. I went to the Chinese, we sat down, we agreed, and we prepared a, a bid. We prepared our bid, we submitted uh, the bid of the, for the, on the closing day, and adjudication started. So after that, I was talking about the new submission. We submitted a new bid with cheat. Uh, adjudication started. So we then uh, submitted a new bid with uh, Chint Electric um, at a cost of 173 million. Adjudication commenced, and obviously the process take time until when a few other challenges, problems with the pricing envelope, delivery duty paid, it was a, it was a, it was a long process. It had been one envelope was cancelled, we had to put in new envelopes, but eventually, in 2015, we were then awarded as the lowest bidder to specification for the Gwanda 100 megawatt solar farm. In other words, we won as the cheapest at the Gwanda solar farm. Then the other company, ZTE1, <laughs> at uh, Blawai and Sukamini, then the other company, Metallurgical, seven. MCC 17, one at Munyachi. So there's the 300 megawatts solar farms. Soon after winning, in terms of the state procurement board laws, a contract should be signed within 30 days or 45 days. We then started contract negotiations. We negotiated our contracts with our lawyers, Chint Electric came through. After negotiating the contract, in October, on the 20th, in 2015, we then signed the 100 megawatt solar farm. As, uh, after signing the contract, as part of the contract, ideally, you negotiate the contract how you want. And it's, it's, it's a question of one company can have a completely different contract with the other company because it's based on how we negotiate. So during our negotiations, I had negotiated for pre-commencement works, but they were not prerequisite or mandatory. We just agreed that we, we may have pre-commencement works as the project proceeds. 
after the contract was signed, uh, we needed a feasibility, a bankable feasibility, which the banks obviously require before they can even look at the funding of any project. They want to know if the project is feasible. So I engaged a company from China, obviously because I had Chinese partners, I thought a feasibility from a Chinese company would be much better. So I engaged a company called Shanghai Electric Power Design Institute, which is the biggest and the best in the Shanghai area, and as well, Chit is also in Shanghai, and we're also going to go and present our loan application based on the Shanghai China Exim branch. So everything would have been work out easier if it's done in Shanghai. So Shanghai Electric Power Design Institute came through to Zimbabwe. They went and stayed at the site for what three weeks, had all their solar, small solar panels and equipment to test the uh, feasibility to see if indeed the sun from Zimbabwe can generate energy that can go into the national grid. They did all their tests and they went back to Shanghai. As soon as they got to Shanghai, they prepared their comprehensive document, which is the feasibility study which they then presented to me and said, Mr. Chivari, we finished the feasibility. That's obviously the first step because there was no feasibility. We had just gone to tender without the feasibility. So when I, got the, when I got the feasibility, in terms of the contract, as part of the pre-commencement works, the feasibility was there at a cost of 2.1 million. And then we had agreed that the pre-commencement works would limit them to $4 million. And we had agreed that we would do $1 million a month and we outlined the works that would classify under the pre-commencement works. The basis of doing this was we just wanted to have some sort of activity to say, take for instance, we have the feasibility. If any of the financiers for the local portion, if China is going to put 85%, if any of the, uh, the the financiers for the local portion will visit the site, at least they can see that the land is cleared.